scientists say it may be a new planet on the edge of our solar system. It's called Tiki, named for an ancient Greek goddess. If it's real, Tiki is a supergiant, four times the size of Jupiter, made of hydrogen and helium. Scientists from the The key to the judgments being released in the book of Revelation is the following. A asteroid is going to hit Earth. And I'm going to show you from the Bible where it is. We're going to do some speculation at the end of the message, the location of which ocean it will strike. And I'm going to show you how what I call an, the apocalyptic shaking of the heavens will take place. And I'm going to show you how... A comet or meteorite is the key to fulfilling verse after verse after verse after verse in the book of Revelation. Does anybody want to go here? Yeah. Let's look at the Word of God first of all in Hebrews chapter 12, 26 to 28. The Bible said, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of those things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Luke chapter 21, verse 11 says, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and pestilence, and fearful signs, and great signs shall there be from heaven heaven. Luke 21 11 in the Amplified reads, there'll be mighty and violent earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilence, plagues, uh, malignant and contag uh, or infectious ec epidemic diseases which are deadly and devastating. And there will be sites of terror and great signs from heaven. Signs of terror and great signs from heaven. Other scriptures indicate Mark 13 25 that the sun shall be darkened and the stars shall fall from heaven. Mark chapter 13, 25, toward the end of the tribulation, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. For 2,500 years, there was no written record of God for mankind. Man lived by seeing an angel, by seeing a vision, by having a spiritual dream. Moses came along and in the wilderness penned what's called the Torah, the first five books of our Bible. They are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. What is unique is this However, Josephus, the Jewish historian, indicates that Adam was given a revelation from God that the earth would be destroyed one time by water and the second time by fire. Josephus even said that Adam's son Seth recorded this. We don't know if it was hieroglyphics or picture form, but recorded it in brick and stone. And Josephus said that if the, if the waters destroyed the brick, the stone would survive. If the waters destroyed the stone, the brick would survive. And 1900 years ago, Josephus said this, that this discovery is in the land of Syriad today, meaning that in 70 AD, before the destruction of the temple, you could have looked at a brick that Seth's sons wrote that talked about the flood coming and fire destroying the earth. We know the flood came 1,600 years after Adam. It was Noah's flood. It was universal. We know that Second Peter says that the elements will melt with fervent heat. We know the fire's coming one day. But in between that time, let's talk about the apocalyptic shaking of the heavens. God says in Genesis 1 and 14 that the sun and the moon and the stars were for signs and seasons. God has always used the heavens to speak to man. Abraham was said, told that his seed would be as the stars of heaven, Genesis 22, 17. Joshua was told that the sun could stand still by his prayer and it did in Joshua 10, 13. Hezekiah was given a sign of the sundial actually going backwards, Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 8. The Magi were said that they saw the star, the star of the Messiah, the Jewish king in the east, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2. So God has always used heavenly signs to speak to man. He's used the sun, moon, and stars for days, for months, and for years. Let's go a step further in this. The other night I preached on Passover, and I told you ten plagues that attacked the ten gods that existed one time in Egypt. Let me share something with you. Did you know history records something happening in the heavens that impacted the earth? Let me give you just a few quick quotes on this. In, in um, Natural History, written by Pliny, he described a comet that was terrible and twisted like a coil that was very grim to behold that struck somewhere near the Middle East about the same time that the plagues were striking Egypt. The Jewish Talmud reports that stones fell from heaven in Egypt that were 
were very hot, i.e. meteorites of some sort. An Arabian writer by the name of Masudi from the 9th century relates the tradition of this and tells of how swift clouds, ants, and other signs of the Lord's rage caused many people to die in Mecca in Arabia. In the book Ages and Chaos, the writer comments that, quote, plagues of insects, drought, and earthquakes in the night, clouds sleeping the ground, and a tidal flood carrying away entire tribes, these disturbances were experienced in Egypt and in Arabia alike. In other words, some scientists who are scholars believe that the trouble that came to Egypt was not just God himself just saying, I'm going to do this, this, and this. It was actually the result of something happening in cosmic activity in the heavens that the entire Middle Eastern area experienced. Do I agree with their speculation? I don't know, but my point is, signs happen in the heavens Whatever happens in the heavens starts impacting what is taking place on the earth. Now here's something that's very interesting. Signs of comets. Yeah, everybody knows what a comet is. But let me show you what happens when a comet comes where it is visible to the earth people. When it's visible to our eyes. Let's put up Halley's Comet. There is a comet that is, now, that is known as Halley's Comet. Listen to me very carefully. This comet came through in 66 AD, four years prior to the destruction of the temple. This comet was spotted in 12 BC when Herod was expanding the temple platform in Jerusalem. It appeared in 66 AD, listen, four years before Jerusalem was destroyed. It appeared in 1910, four years before World War I. It appeared in 1988, four years before the Gulf War broke out. This comet seems to appear in history four years prior to something happening on earth. It's either the overthrow of an empire, a nation, or a king, or a terrible calamity. Do your own research on that. It's extremely interesting. Now, in August the 9th, 1974, there was a Japanese comet that swept through our solar system, a very large one. Something weird happened in August of 1974. Everybody listen carefully. During the time the comet was seen by inhabitants of the earth, all nine leaders of the common market fell. President Nixon departed office on August the 9th, 1974, on the Hebrew calendar. On August the 9th, it was the 9th of Av, the most dreaded day among the Jewish people on their calendar. So why am I telling you that? Well, I'll tell you why I'm telling you that after I talk about hell Bop Comet. hell Bop Comet was 50,000 times brighter than Halley's Comet. We have a picture of it. Now, this was the Hellboss Bach Comet. Listen carefully. First seen on April the 27th, 1993, which is on the Hebrew calendar, was the very day that the British mandate ended over the city of Jerusalem. On July 23rd, 1995, it was spotted in a constellation called Sagittarius, which is a half beast and a half man, which is an imagery of the coming Antichrist. It was last seen. I love this. This comet, this is an actual photograph, this comet was last seen, are you ready for this, 4,200 years ago. A gentleman by the name of Wadsworth, who was a Christian astronomer, calculated, I love this, that the last time this comet was seen streaking through the universe was when a man named Noah was building the ark preparing for the flood. The Seder Olam Rabbah of Jewish writing, according to Bill Cloud, comments that tradition says that Noah saw a comet in the heavens while he's building the ark, which was a sign to him that the world was going to be destroyed by some kind of cataclysmic judgment. By the way, Hellbop exited our galaxy on Pentecost in 1998. In 1998, it was reported, listen to this, that in Israel, it was reported in Israel, that according to Jewish oral tradition, when a comet was seen passing through the constellation Orion, listen, which Hellbop did on Pentecost of 1998 that it would be a sign that the earth would be destroyed. So why are we getting into these signs of the heavens? Please listen to me carefully. Because it was Jesus that said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Now if Jesus said there's going to be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars, do you not think if he said it we should understand what he meant? Do you think we should not dig out these things and try to understand what our signs? Why are they happening? Why are they taking place? Let me answer it for you since you're not. Yes! We should be doing that. 
It is also interesting to note that prior to the destruction of the temple in the year 70 A.D., this Jewish historian Josephus, who lived back then, started talking about these weird cosmic signs in the heavens. He said a comet was seen over the city for one year. We now know that was the Hellbop comet. But he also said this, and let's show this next picture. He said a star shaped like a sword appeared in the heavens. This that I'm showing you right now was taken in Italy four years before 9-11. Everybody say four years. That is a meteorite shower taking place in the paw of Leo the lion. Leo the lion. Now we call it Leo, they call it Leo the lion, but the emblem of Judah is the lion. And coming out of this paw was this, this meteorite shower that looked like a sword. It, it's shaped like a sword in the heavens. You can see, and there are some pictures that when you take it up closer, you can even see how it comes to a point. I believe that in the destruction of the temple, that is what they saw hanging over the city for a period of time prior to the destruction and read it as a cosmic sign of war coming. Hey, four years before we go to war on 9-11, that appeared in the Middle East. Is everybody still here to shout amen? Why are we talking about this? I'll say it again. Jesus said there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars. Now you have to understand something about these things which are going on, these signs, these cosmic signs, because rabbis for centuries, for centuries, not recently, ladies and gentlemen, for centuries have had teachings where they have spotted comets and they've noticed what has happened a few years later. They've spotted a comet and they've noted what's happened years later. And they always will tell you the appearance of a comet means trouble for the world. He's coming. Awake, awake, oh sleeper. Awake, awake, oh sleeper. He's coming. He's coming, he's alive, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David, the slain lamb. We begin with the violence in Britain that is only getting worse. Indeed, for the first time since the rioting and looting started over the weekend, it has spread outside London to other major British cities. ABC's Simon McGregor Wood joins us by phone from London. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, that's right. Uh, violence last night spread outside London to Birmingham, Liverpool, there were isolated incidents in Bristol and other cities. At the epicenter of this, this sort of firestorm of, of rioting that remains in London. Last night it spread to some really quite affluent areas in South and West London. We saw, and you probably see uh, over there, some extraordinary pictures of gangs of hundreds of often masked youths uh, rioting through the streets, setting shops alight, uh, looting, widespread looting, and in many cases, according to local residents, the police... I'm either... here in Chimayo, where nine-year-old Luke Velasquez lived here with his father, Jose. According to court documents, he told investigators he watched his father shoot up heroin several times and that his father even injected him with heroin at least ten times on the right side of his neck. A tense moment in Mogadishu. You can see it and you can hear the anger and frustration as hungry Somalis rush a food distribution point in the capital. The World Food Program has flown in a second plane load of relief supplies now, but a flare-up in the fighting around Mogadishu. It's time to get right with God. And I'm telling you now what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying. It's time, Holy Spirit, only you can fill this house with your presence and make Christ real. Only you can speak to the depths of the soul, to those who know their sinners, to those who have backslidden, to those, O oh Lord, who have been growing cold and indifferent to the call of God and the things of Christ. Oh God, come and speak. He has spoken this into my heart, and I've received it. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Behold, now is the accepted time Behold, now is the day of salvation. He said, this is the day.